yummy. Hi, my name is Peng. I'm a photographer and I'm a travel addict. And in today's video, I wanna share with you five accessories I bought for my van that I think you may like as well. Now, three of them are more universal. So I think no matter what van or RV you own, you can use them. The other two are more specific to the storyteller, which I'll leave at the end. So let's get started with those first three. First item up is the milk frother. I love Nespresso, especially the foamy milk part. But even the smallest machine I can find is still, at least to me personally, pretty big for a van. Not to mention that it's so expensive, I don't want to leave it in the van when I go home. So that means I have to go take it in, take it out. It's just a pain. So my next thought was to just bring the foamer, that little round mug looking thing. But even that is pretty big just to fit it in the drawer. Uh, it takes out a lot of room. So I found this on Amazon. That's right, it's a tiny handheld milk frother. To use it, you just pour however much milk you want in the mug, whip it up, then pour the coffee, and I like to add a touch of cream. Yum! fake Nespresso. It also works on warm milk. Just be sure to use a mug that's microwave safe. Depending on your microwave, zap the milk for about 30 to 45 seconds and then whip it. This frother costs about 10 bucks and they have a ton of colors to choose from. I'll put a link to this and everything else I talk about in this video down below. They also have an upgraded one with titanium motor that costs about 13 bucks. I accidentally bought that one to use at home, and honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. Maybe that one will last longer, but so far I've had both for a year now and they both run fine. There's supposed to be lifetime warranty on these. I've never tested it out, but honestly, even if they don't honor the warranty, this is like 10 bucks. And here's a quick little tip. Before you wash it, pick it up and dry spin it one more time. That will spin off most of the excess milk and this will make you make it much easier to wash, especially if you're in the van and you're trying to conserve water. And now look at that. Oh, foamy hot milk. When I'm done, this is the only thing I need to clean and I can just toss it in my drawer with the silverware. Now I have to say that this is still no replacement for an espresso. But me personally, I'm not a huge coffee connoisseur. I'm perfectly happy with my Trader Joe's coffee, drip coffee. And to me, for the space and cost saving, this is a good compromise. Second accessory I use frequently is this collapsible kettle. It comes in this nice square box, so it's easy to store in my drawer. Now, up till today, I still don't know how to properly pronounce this brand. Hudel, Holdor, but it really doesn't matter because this kettle is amazing. Let's open it up and let me show you. It comes with this universal, even branded adapter. So you have UK, you have the US plug, and if you move it to the middle and push, you even have the general European plug. And on top of the regular plugs, it even comes with two USB plugs. So this thing, I'm not only keeping it in the van with the kettle, when I'm doing international travels, I'm actually bringing this as an adapter. So that's a nice little bonus here. And then you have the actual kettle itself. To open it, you can either hold, grab the handle here, or I have big hands. It's actually easier for me to just grab it from the top and just twist slightly and it pops up. On the bottom, you can see the cable winds in there nicely and it's a really long, long, nice cable here. There is a nice little cutout for the cable so you can put it in, wedge it in there so you can put the kettle on the ground, on the table flat. 
There's a nice little push button here to open up the lid. And you can see pretty large capacity here. To turn it on, just push this button. I'm not plugged in right now, so it won't come on, but uh, this light will turn red. And once the water is boiling, this will automatically shut down, which is important for safety and also just to conserve battery inside the van. Now, closing the kettle is the only place where this design falls short a little bit. Let me explain. You see these little catches down here, these little narrow ledges? There are three of them all around, and that is the only thing, those are the only things that are holding this top down. When you're using this to boil water, this top portion inevitably gets hot. And what happens when it gets hot is things expand. And what happens when you try to close it, well, it doesn't like to stay closed. Now, to be fair, you never really put this away right after you boil water because you want to let this kettle cool down before you put it away. However, this tolerance is so low, this catch is so small, this, you really have to wait for the kettle to almost cool back down to room temperature before you can easily snap it back. Oh, look at this. Even now, it doesn't like staying down. So you have to kind of push down hard a little bit. But other than that, this kettle, look at how small it is and look at how pretty it is. I really like it. One more thing I almost forgot to mention is there is an adjuster on the bottom, so this is compatible with both 110 and 220. So it truly is an international travel kettle, and I love it. I've actually done a side-by-side -side comparison video between this one and the best-selling model on Amazon, and well, spoiler alert, guess which one won? I haven't made that video yet, but in case you are interested in how I tested it and why I came to that conclusion, once that video is made, I will put a link up here in the corner so you can watch that. And the third little accessory that I love is the step ladder. Well, maybe not a ladder since it's just one step. You can find a lot of similar steps on Amazon. I picked this Chemco aluminum one simply because it's a more established brand and I've used and liked their other products. As you can see, this step has four fold away legs, so it's easy to store. Each leg has four adjustable heights. The leg fold out like so and locks into place. And when you need to fold it back, it's just one push of this button. It's not particularly light, but it doesn't move around when you step on it and it's very sturdy, which is what I want in a step. Let me show you how it works on my van. Once I fold it over, once I'm at camp. Voila, there you have it. And the way I use it, I actually just use it to bypass this uh, factory step that came with the van. You just go straight in like this. Go straight out like so. So you may be asking, if the van came with a running board, why do I need this step? Well, there are two reasons, at least in my van. First is, this is a jacked up 4x4 version, so even with the running board, that's still a pretty high step. If you have elderly or short people in the family, it's gonna be a struggle for them to use. Not to mention, on this van, the running board is pretty narrow. I have a size 13, and if I put my foot on it, you can see only a third of my foot is really stepping on anything. I could turn my foot sideways, but it's still very awkward to use. Now, if you're a storyteller owner, you may be typing away in the comments about how this particular running board is adjustable, and I can extend it out further, but I don't want to. I've done tight trails that I came very close to hitting this running board, so ideally this thing wouldn't even be here, but without the running board, it's just not practical. So the way STO installed it is a very good compromise and I'm very happy with it. Second reason is, it's great if you're parked on uneven grounds. I've only recently discovered this benefit by accident. I found a stunning boondocking spot, but the ground was leaning. To level the van, I put this wheel on blocks, but with that wheel far off the ground, there was a giant gap between the door and the ground. It was like rock climbing just to get onto the running board, but this step saved the day. For the record, I did consider those fancy retractable running boards that tuck away when you close the door and comes down when you open the door. 
best of both worlds, right? Well, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you will know I value simplicity more than anything. I will be worried about hitting and damaging the running board when I go off-roading. Or what if it's stuck in the down position while I'm in the middle of nowhere? Not to mention those cost thousands of dollars. This one, 50 bucks. <laughs> the one downside I found so far is this is only useful when I'm parked at camp. It's just not practical to take it in and out every time I stop at a rest area. But it really doesn't bother me because I only frequently come in and out of this door when I'm at camp. All right, let's come into the van to talk about items number four and five. And I know at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that these two items are more targeted towards storyteller owners because of the unique design. However, I know RVers and van lifers are constantly looking for things to improve space usage as well as comfort. So maybe these will apply to you as well. So let's move on. And item number four is this flat head extension cord. When I first got this van, my thought was, why do they have to put this plug here? Why can't they put it here? Or even better, put it here, because this makes more sense. This is where you use your appliance. Well, it turns out, and this I got confirmation from Storyteller, is that one of their goal was to make this van uh, qualify as an RV. That means you can register it as an RV, you can insure it as an RV, and it also lowers the cost of registration and insurance. In order to qualify as an RV, there are certain design codes you have to meet and this plug right here is unfortunately one of those requirements. So sad to say guys, unless Storyteller makes some major interior layout design changes, these plugs are probably here to stay. But that doesn't mean you have to suffer because we have these extension cords. And I have to give a shout out to Michelle Berthoff because she found these on Amazon and she posted it on Facebook. That's how I found these. So these extensions are just like the normal extension except the head is flat. And of course, when you plug it in, like so, now there's nothing to get in your way. It's flat and neat. This extension cord even came with some stickers so you can actually glue it in place so it doesn't move around. However, I like the flexibility because now I can drag this anywhere I want. I can extend it all the way over there on the bed to use. I can extend it all the way to the front seat if I choose to. I even unplugged it from here one time and use it here. And the reason, and here's a little fun little story, when I was in Colorado, the gray tank release valve, not the gray tank itself, the release valve, that little pulley thing froze. So I had to use a hairdryer uh, to blow that, blow on the little valve to melt the ice. The cable wasn't long enough, so I had to plug that extension over here or dangle it outside the window to use it. It did work, so all is well, but that is the reason why I don't like to tie this down or glue this down. I like this to be flexible. But you know, if you want a neat interior, you can definitely choose to stick this, glue this all the way around. I think the way Michelle had it is she glued it all the way around and then, excuse me here, one-handed operation. And during travel, and this is what I do too, is just wedge it right here and it's not going anywhere. The last item is this Wilpo Memory Foam Camping Mattress. It comes in different sizes and is designed for tent camping. But I found this one that fits perfectly on the Groove Lounge. I use it as a mattress for the third guest. It also doubles as seat cushion during the day. And when you want to put it away, it rolls up easily. As you can see on the days that I'm feeling lazy, I don't even bother removing the bed sheet. I just roll them all up and tie it up with these straps. It even comes with its own bag. I also love how easy it is to transport this mattress. All the other ones I looked at, you have to fold them, but once you fold them, they're gigantic. This one just rolls into this donut shape and it wedges perfectly between the seat and this uh, water tank wall, which means that it's not going anywhere. And on top of that, there's you can even leave a little gap here. <laughs> I sometimes just throw my bag in there so they don't roll around over the floor. It's perfect! I love this! When I'm ready to unfurl it, I just unclick these straps. And it's all done! 
that was it. Those were the five accessories that I really like. If you end up buying any of them, comment below and let me know how you like them. And I will see you next time.